Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we're going to be wrapping up what I read in June and also do like a little mid-year check-in on how my goals are going. So in June I read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Technically eight books. I am someone who counts DNFs towards my goal if I read over 50% because it like feels right to me. Like if I've read enough to form an opinion, that feels right. So let's make that eight reads. I had two library borrows, two audiobook rereads, two books off my physical TBR, and two advanced copies. That's very nice. And as always, we will start off with my stats for the month. As usual, my moods were largely emotional, dark, and mysterious. I had a little bit of funny in there because what did I read that was funny? I think Dear Wendy has a lot of humour in it, and A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. Although not a funny book, T. Kingfisher is an excellent humorous writer, like the narrative voice and the tone, and her characters are just funny. And like, I know it's a horror, but I'm having a little giggle at the same time. Young Adult continues to be my top genre, and as always, I don't believe it's a genre. Then we have horror, fantasy, and romance. What was the romance in here? It must be a curse for true love, because I can't think of what, 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 it could, what it could be. And my average rating was 4.0 stars. It's been a very good reading month for me, I think. Let's talk a little about the books I read. We started off with the advanced copy of Something to be Proud of, which is a book about queerness and autism. And it's advanced copy, and that is the book that I did not finish for this month. I read a lot of it, but there's something about the protagonist's voice that didn't work for me specifically. And I thought, you know, we're going to put this down and move on, because if I keep reading, it's guaranteed to be a negative review, and I just, I know I'm just not going to do that to myself. It's for the best for everyone that I just stop. And I think it's a case that it's an autistic protagonist, and the author is representing this one specific side of, auti of autistic representation. And as an autistic person, it's just not me, and it's a part that I just can't relate to at all. Next book I read was my audiobook reread of House and Salt and Sorrow. It's on here. It's up here somewhere. I'm rereading that in preparation to read House of Roots and Ruin because I'm trying to like finish the series that I started. Maybe not this month, maybe next month. I'm going to actually make some progress. And that was also a theme for last month where I thought, you know, I'm going to reread the... Is it the Era of the Folk trilogy, like the Four Prince ones? So I thought, yeah, I'm going to reread those. And today I have started reading this one there. So progress. And House of Salt and Sorrow is a book that I give five stars, maybe like 4.5 stars, and like I don't enjoy the ending at all. I think it like comes out of a bit nowhere, it's a bit nonsensy in my opinion. But everything else about the book works for me so well. Again, it's one of those books that is written specifically for me, that I am enthralled by it. I love Erin A. Craig's writing. I love Small Favours as well. I can't wait for, is it the 13th Child to come out? Very exciting. This is like my new auto by author. I'm obsessed with her. Next up, we have an advanced copy of The Dark We Know, which I gave four stars. And looking back on this book, I remember nothing about it. I think I wrote something in like my Goodreads view of like, I read this in a fever dream state. I have no idea what I just read, but I know I loved it. I will put my actual review here. But it's vaguely similar to a book we're going to come to in terms of it's about the main character, a young adult, returning to their hometown or their original house to deal with an incident, usually a death, and then darkness unravels. And I thought it was intriguing because I finished this and I started reading, I'm going to tell you now, I started reading Your Blood, My Bones by Kelly Andrew, mid reading The Dark We Know, and I thought, you know what, these are like very similar plot-wise, and I'm very behind this. I'm into this. So The Dark We Know was incredible, show-stopping, flawless, I loved it, but I can't remember a single thing about it or like why I liked it, I just know I loved it. Also at this point I'm just going to put like, here's, here's the books I read this month, and there is a theme for them, and that is Spooky House, slightly sentient house, a little bit of evil, and then just ignore Dear Wendy and the Curse of True Love there, because like the, the little light, 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 beautiful pastel covers. It was a spooky house month. And is this research for something that I'm writing? No, I just, I just like houses at this point. So yeah, I love the dark green note. Your Blood, My Bones by Kelly Andrew is, I, get a, I say a surprise love, because somewhere i don't is it still on my shelves i don't think it is but i read a whispering dark last year or the year before i want to say and i did not enjoy it at all because in theory it was a book that was again specifically for me and then just everything about it didn't work for me like the characters didn't work the plot didn't work like the magic system i was just confused and didn't understand any of it so i went into your blood my bones because i thought you know again this is a, a book for me i'm willing to give it a try and it was 
this time it was for me. <laughs> and I think I was lauding because just brace off the premise and the synopsis and everything we knew about the book ahead of time. It just seemed simpler. And that's what I wanted from The Whispering Dark. And it was. And it was perfect. Well, it wasn't perfect. I just really, I loved it a lot. And then another book I read this month was Dear Wendy, which is an aromantic, asexual representation, kids in their first year at college. All good vibes. Light-hearted, which is not usually what I go for. It was funny. It was all about friendship. But I picked it up because it's about asexuality. And the only other, like, big contemporary asexual book I've read is Loveless right here. And I thought, I need more of that in my life. And again, as re this one is research for what I'm currently writing. And I thought, I need this in my life, and I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot. It's one of my favourite reads this month. I think the other one is... we'll get there. They're very different books, my favourites this month. And I don't have a huge amount to say about Dear Wendy. It's definitely a comfort read. It's light-hearted. It's got a happy ending. It's all the good... It's all what you expect in like a happily ever after contemporary romance, just without the romance. And I'm glad that it is a book about two friends meeting each other and falling in love with each other, but completely platonically. I love it. Yeah, Dear Wendy is also a very easy to read book. It says I read it over two days. I think I started in the afternoon and I finished it at like one or two in the morning. So it was like unput downable in a sense. Next book I read again was also of my physical TBR and it was A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. And... I'm slowly making my way through every book she's ever written because I read Nettle and Bone in January and I've just become obsessed. Which is weird because Nettle and Bone is like the only fantasy one that I've read so far. The other ones have been like contemporary horror or horror influence. But I'm engaged across all, all of these genres. I mean, I'm going to make a point to talk about it because I very, very upsettingly left What Moves the Dead of my last month wrap up. They are slotted into my shelves now, this lovely dark section right behind me. They are very slim, very short books, and what T. Kingfisher managed to do in such a short amount of time is very impressive. I mean, these books are set over a very short timeline, I think at least the contemporary ones are all set over like about a week. It's, it's so good, the structure, the plot, the pacing, the characters I love. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to the main character's Wi-Fi for being a very notable character in this book, or lack of Wi-Fi in a sense. There's also a like adopted baby vulture who just hangs out and saves the day in the end, which is I don't think it's a spoiler. And I love it. It's just these little like quirky things. All the characters feel real. They feel like people I would meet like down a coffee shop somewhere. And not to just keep saying I love it about all these books, but I do love them all. <laughs> And then, okay, we kind of covered your blood, my bones. We've done that one. So next book I finished was A Curse of True Love by Stephanie Garber, who I will be reading... What's the last one called? It's down here. A Ballad of... No, A Curse of True Love. I know we're not big Stephanie fans right now because her, um, her actions towards certain conflicts in the world, but I already own this book. I got it when it came out like a year or two ago, so like, I'm, I'm going to read it because I have it. And I'm rereading the audiobooks that, again, I already had in preparation. And I enjoy A Curse for True Love not as much as Once Upon a Broken Heart. It's still like kind of light-hearted, fun, a little bit romantic, a little bit fantasy. But I think I'm going to have to read the last one to actually confirm, but like, is it like got like a bit of a middle book blues vibe, or is it just me? It's like not much really happens except Evangeline's kind of just on the run the entire time. And there's a ball. I love a ball. But it, it's not the first book. And again, I, I did enjoy the first book, but again, the first book isn't Caravel, which I do love. I think this was my lowest rated read for the month. Like, I still enjoy it. It's still like a fun, like hard, easy to, re easy to read fantasy is what it is. But it's fine. And then the final book I read this month, which I finished yesterday, is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow, I believe. And this is the book that's been on my TBR since it came out, since I first heard about it. And I think it's been years now, and I've somehow managed to know nothing about the book, which is very impressive. I picked up, I started reading it, I thought, you know, this is just not what I want. I think I just assumed it was like Dark Academia or something based off the cover, which is just not correct. But yeah, it's a book that I picked up because based off the very abstract vibes I had, I thought it was for me. I started reading it and I thought, hmm, this is not what I expected at all. And I finished reading it and it was exactly for me. So like, it all worked out in the end. I gave this book five stars. I'm completely obsessed with it. 
and my is too early on to be in the process review so I finished it yesterday. Again, it has the same slight fever dream ending that House of Salt and Sorrow and also Small Favours does, but it just gets me. It's a very me book. <laughs> As always, I've been very good at choosing my reads this month if you ignore my self-inflicted rereads. And that covers everything in here. I'm still on a quest to design my own reading journal because I have like I've even fully abandoned the monthly wrap-up pages in there. I just use this for the calendar now and I want a bit more going on. I've also abandoned, where is it? I was very good about these the, these pages in the Owl Crate reading journal and then I just, I gave up. So let's talk a little bit about our mid-year stats, our mid-year check-in, I think. So I'm currently 49 out of, I believe, 75 read is why I set my reading challenge as. I always start the year at 52 because one book a week is attainable for like my current lifestyle. Then I always go through this uh, fever dream phase of reading books very quickly and I hit my goal too quickly so I increase to 75. So I usually slow down in the second half of the year so 100 feels a bit much but 75 feels okay. Um, my biggest moods as we all know by now is dark emotional adventurous mysterious and tense. I enjoy a good what I refer to as an evil little book. Genres are of course YA, fantasy, LGBT, horror and romance. We've got a bit of mystery, historical, contemporary, middle grade and sci-fi in there though, even though I think the only sci-fi book I've read is Junker 7. Oh, my most read authors, we have Holly Black for the Cruel Prince trilogy and also the Lost Sisters like little novella short story thing. T Kingfisher who is impressive because I discovered her in January and now I'm down to I've got I've got four on the go. Lee Bardugo because I reread Grishaver, Stephanie Garber because I'm I'm reading Once Upon a Broken Heart. Kay Ankrum was Icarus and Frankenstein retelling. Ava Reed was a study in drowning and Lady Macbeth, which is like a book I love and a book I very much did not love. I think my review for it is coming out next week. Erin A. Craig. So how so sorry, did I did I also reread Small Favours? I might have. I might have. Then CG Drews was Don't Let the Forest In, which is coming out in October in the US. I think it's now got a January 2025 release date for the UK and like a shiny new UK cover. And the other CG Drews book I read was House for Lost Things, which I think my review for that will be coming out sometime over the summer. Average rating 3.64 stars, largely 3.5 and 4 stars. And 3.5 in a book I think is fine, but a 3.5 star film will change your life. Oh yes, so Storygraph doesn't, if you hit the DNF button, doesn't count as a read at all. So I have 46 books finished on Storygraph, but 49 because I include these specific DNFs. I set a 20,000 page goal. I usually start off at 15,000 and also 150 hours for audiobook, but as I increase from 52 to 75 books, I also increase those other stats as well. And I don't pay a huge amount of attention to these stats, because sometimes I like to go for a short book phase. Sometimes I like a long audiobook phase, it depends on the vibe very much. But I'm halfway through my page goal, which is good for this point in the year. It's at 20,000 pages, I've read 10,799, which means I'm ahead by 963 pages, which is like two or three books. And then my hours goal is going great, because I've just been great at reading audiobooks this year. It's at 200 hours, I've read 155.32, which is 78%. And I'm ahead by 56.95 hours, which could be like four or five audiobooks. And that is my stats for the month and my stats for the first half of the year. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have a few more videos coming out in July about, you know, the mid-year book freak out tag, my favourite books of the year so far. More like detailed about the books than I do in these little monthly wrap-up videos. I've got a few more reviews coming out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye. Sci-fi in there though, even though I think the only sci-fi book I've read is Junker 7.